Hello everybody, it's your boy Sam, aka the train mother at Maine, my daddies and gladdies. Um, once again, if you don't like my introductions, I can't really help you, but I'm glad you're here. So I'm going to do a different style video today. It is a how-to slash review, depending how you look at it. I'm going to show you what I did, how I did it, and then tell you if I think it works. And uh, it does, obviously, because I'm making a video about it. Um, so if you're a longtime subscriber, you will have seen my uh, three previous layouts. If you're a newer subscriber, you can go watch me from day one to the day that I don't have them anymore of my three previous layouts, um, including the one that I just sold last month. Once again, I uh, said in that video I wouldn't be making a new layout until we move. Um, but I decided, you know what, I'm constantly working on it. I'm going to start one here dedicated to uh, knowing that I'm going to move eventually and take this with me. Um, really relying on the two corners of that back wall. So I'm going to make it into two pieces and it'll come apart in the middle and both ends will be corners. So no matter where I go at the new house, there's going to be a corner that I start the layout in. So, you know, I can definitely use one or two, if not both and either build more tables in the middle or stagger them somehow. Um, so that's the plan. Um, if you've seen my, the how-to today is going to be how to wire a um, turnout for DCC and to, uh, if it's power routing, electrofrog or insulfrog. Um, reason being, um, you can see I've got a little scrap track set up here, uh, all stuff that I've pulled off the other layouts. I save everything, I save all my extra lumber track, scenics wire whatever because you never know when you're going to use it and here we are today i'm using old wire old track um, old power cables and old one amp bachman crap um, for this setup so on my previous layouts the first two like i said go watch all those series the first two i used bachman easy track um, for the main lines and main line turnouts and then on the previous layout which i just sold i went to kato track uh, thinking it was an upgrade frankly i found the results Pretty typical Bachman, typical of Bachman, just maybe a little bit nicer. Um, I've always, so like I said, Bachman or Kato was used for the main lines and then the main line turnout. So anything to get off the turnout, get off the main line of turnout to go to a yard or the mine or the um, lumber mill, whatever it might be. Um, once I got off the main, so pretend, you know, this switch comes off the main, it's Bachman. And then as soon as I'm on the branch line or yards or industry tracks, I've always used atlas code 80 um, with woodland scenics foam rubber base you've seen me uh, go watch the videos you'll see how i've laid all my track um, and i've always used pico insulfrog frog or electro frog turnouts it never made a difference to me until the planning stages for this new layout um, i've got bench work drawn out i just need to go by the lumber and i'm working on a track plan as we speak doing some testing um, the reason it never mattered to me before is, I'll explain, Bachman and Kato, Kato offer turnouts that you can choose or uh, wire yourself to be power routing or non-power routing. Power routing by, I mean, uh, you can see this switch is lined for the siding right now. Uh, this is the main um, power routing. It's routing the power that you have, or it's powering the, sorry, powering the route that you have selected so right now if there was a locomotive here it would be able to move and if it was parked here it wouldn't if i flip it back to the main now the locomotive that's on the siding is dead and this main line is powered um so when i was running dc which i did a lot of times as i was working um, it didn't matter because i was working one train and it's going to be on the always uh, the line that it's working is going to be powered because why would I have it off if I'm doing stuff with it? Um, my DCC unit is a Bachman Easy Command, which I really enjoy. It's very, very simple, requires no wiring. But even with that, I could be running two trains on the main at the same time. Um, or when I had double mains, it was no problem, different directions, different speeds. I could stop and blah, blah, blah. But once I got off of any main line, so if I'm running my DCC system right now, I have no wiring. Uh, my switches off the main are power routing. So if I'm running a train on my second main line and this guy's coming in here to do some yard work, the power routing 
when I go to take it off the main, let's just say this is, you know, the, the branch line off the main, the power um, cuts off from certain sections of the layout because the power normally runs through here and both tracks are, you know, wired together just by the joiners, you know, cre uh, creating the loops. Once I cut that power from the main entire loopage or whatever you want to call it, um, only the train that is closest to the power source that's still getting the power feed directly uh, will have, you know, the capability to run. So um, I want to run true DCC even with my Bachman uh, easy command, meaning that um, I want to be able to run a train and still be doing switching at an industry while using the unit, meaning that I need my main line powered at all times beyond where the switches are. And that's just some simple wiring. Uh, to be 100% honest with you, I never ventured into any kind of wiring, even with my easy command, because it's intimidating. Um, I never even soldered rail joiners till about a year and a half ago. That was intimidating. So now I solder, not all of them, but most of my joiners. This is a test loop, so it doesn't matter. And uh, I would never go back to not. Just the uh, continuity of power alone was worth learning how to do it. There was a learning curve, practice on like a workbench scrap track, just like this. Um, use your old track. And then wiring was pretty much the same thing. I was thinking about it last night. I'm like, uh, I want to use on this new layout for my main lines, uh, Pico Flex or Atlas Flex Track. I already bought about 25 feet. It's over there on the shelf. Um, and then Pico turnouts for everything off the main, onto the main yards, industries. So the whole entire layout, um, Pico and Atlas. I will never use plastic base sectional track again. Um, Atlas Code 80 Flex, and I'm definitely going to use some sectional track in areas. Um, the Flex is super nice for the bulk of everything, but there will be some sectional track uh, that I'll be using, and I still have a ton of new anyway. So the dilemma again, um, and why we're here, um, I learned to solder, and then I'm like, I could just solder the wires on. My idea was if the... Uh, industry is being worked the switch is going to be thrown that way for whatever reason obviously i'll have it back and forth if the train's about to be coming on the main um i can't run a train by on the main that's an issue for me also the same thing if the main is aligned and i'm wanting to work the industry the industry would be dead that's an issue for me so i can't actually operate and run a train at the same time even with dcc so if my switch is thrown for the industry i want my train to keep going i'm like why can't i just go ahead and take power from the main line that's already being powered and just jump where the switch is. So even if the switch is thrown the opposite direction, it's still going to be powered beyond that. And then I'll do the same thing eventually. I just wanted to make sure the theory worked. If I have an industry track or a yard track coming off, um, I will also jump off these wires and go to that as well. So when it's lined to the main and I'm working back here, I have power. So what I did, uh, real simple, um, I hope you could see it well. I'm zoomed in as much as I can without it getting grainy, trying to. I just took some extra wire. So I soldered both tracks. So the uh, upper track and the lower track on the main. And I went from behind the joiners to the Pico turnout. So here's the Atlas track, here's the Pico. And then I did the same thing, I wired the same rails to each other beyond the turnout on both ends. You can even see this joiner is really cocked because I just threw it on quickly, but the power still allows it to go through. So let's show you. So I have my little RS3 here, Pennsylvania. I love it. It's my favorite loco. So right now it's lined for the main. Okay, so he's got power. So if I was trying to do something in the industry or if he was running on the main and I just, I basically just shut him off in normal circumstances without these wires right now, he would have no power. But since I went ahead and like I said, the power source is right here, I guess it doesn't matter where it is, but the power is going to continue up to here. And then once this is thrown, it's only going to power that way. I want power here, so I just took this rail, connected it to the same rail for polarity. Don't mix and match them. And then the same thing here, so the power is thrown this way, but it's still feeding power to this track. So right now with a Pico, Intel Frog, or Electro Frog with no wiring, this locomotive would not be able to move. But 
I don't know why it's such a simple theory and it only just occurred to me. Oops, well, it's because I have the switch lined the wrong way. So naturally, that would happen. Um, naturally, that would happen. The uh, theory is so simple. It's just, yeah, power is going to both. I'm not an electrician. Wiring was always intimidating to me, but now that I can solder and just tried this, uh, that really is a huge game changer for me. Uh, I highly recommend you, even if you do it sloppily, you can do this and learn it in about 10 minutes. Just practice. And uh, yeah, it's beautiful. I can now use the track that I want without doing crazy wiring. And uh, I know it's going to increase my operations and fun. And uh, it was right in front of my face the whole time. I just never cared to venture into it. So, all right, well... Yeah, how to wire a insole frog or electro frog power turnout. Um, I guess that's pretty much all I got for you. So if you uh, enjoy it, let me know. I'll do some more review type stuff as I'm building the new layout. If not, it'll just stay vlog style. I hope you all enjoy and uh, subscribe to Train Main.